You know, as I look back in my life, I was sitting where you sit 27 years ago. 27. In fact, his dad gave me a Bible. And as I began to read this Bible, I began, God began to open up my eyes and show me all the treasures that he has in here for me. And it was in this very room right here that I got baptized, right here in this room. And yes, I went on back to prison for the second time. But you know, what was so amazing was it was here that God began to give me direction. My greatest joy is when someone uh, comes to Jesus. I was in a pod some years ago, me and my, my brother, uh, uh, Reverend Foster, and we had seven men give their life to Jesus. Uh, they got baptized and, and they went on to prison. Uh, two of them are now ministering in their prisons right now. Uh, I like to adopt young men who have no fathers and, and I write to them and talk to them, make sure you encourage them that you know, now they have a man who loves God uh, uh, that is now their spiritual father. Danny had, had a drug ring between Galesburg and Peoria, I believe it was at that time, and he got caught, he and his cronies, they got put into Peoria County Jail. And Danny couldn't read or write, but somehow I think his mother, someone had, had shared, at least read the Bible to him, and this man had a, a huge desire to know how to read the Bible. Uh, so he got into some classes there at the Peoria County Jail to learn how to read, and he did learn how to read just simply so that he could read the Bible. As it says in the Bible, our work is not fruitless. There are examples where inmates got turned around and accepted the Lord. And when they got released, they went into their hometowns and they continued on preaching the gospel. Last Sunday we baptized four men and I have confidence in those men and I just appreciate the fact that they've been able to find what it took. And this ministry is a ripe field for harvest because they've tried it their way. And it was here that God began to direct me. Does anybody need direction this morning? Well, right here, it can happen right here, but you got to trust God. And as I began to trust him, and I went on and went to prison, and I came out in 1991, and I walked into a church I, I got out on a Friday and I walked in there Sunday and I was there. I've been there ever since. See, God is good, isn't he? As we look at Brian Prison Ministries, we could divide it into three parts. First is the ministry of going in and preaching or teaching and having Bible studies, rap sessions, and working in the pods with the various prisoners in the various prisons. Today, Free and Prison Ministry has 13 locations of prisons and jails in Illinois, Florida, and Missouri where they have chaplaincy or volunteers that go in and do the services. So we're 13 in the United States, 23 in Romania, and also we have two operations of prisons in Russia. In prison, I prayed, and as I was on my knees, I heard in my mind a voice saying, Open the book in front of you. And it opened to Psalm 119. And so I began to read Psalm 119. And if you know Christ, you know that what's in us is greater than what's in the world. The men's ministry, we believe, is so powerful because if we can get the man, uh, we believe that we can help the family come to the Lord too. And we oftentimes just encourage them that they, if they become a better citizen in society, then we all win. They win, their family wins, their neighbor wins, and their community wins. I am working in the Cordo prison about 10 years through Berean Prison Ministry. And I have to tell you that last year was the richest year since I've been going to the prison. I had the occasion to work with a prisoner that is a Chinese citizen, and he is condemned to a sentence of life. One of the days that I visited him, he gave his life to the Lord. 
We prayed. I even managed to find a Chinese Bible for him and also for his friend, who is also Chinese. When he saw the Bible in Chinese, after 22 years in prison, he just couldn't believe it. And this man, on one of the visits, he said, I have a gift for you. And when I saw it, I teared up. He painted a picture of a Bible being handed in through the little door where they send the food in to the cell for the inmates. And he wrote on the back, for Brother Vero, who helped me a lot to understand the Word of God. 2016. One of the interesting incidents that came from the work in Romania was when a gypsy became converted in the prison ministry in Mircarechuk, and he went to the community and began to have Bible studies with the gypsies, and as a result of that, there was a gypsy church that was formed in Mircarechuk, and the Brian prison ministry helped them get started and help even fund a building so that they can meet. And today they have about 150 gypsies that are there meeting every Sunday and have made a change in their life. The second aspect of the prison ministry is the Bible studies and the Bibles that are sent out to the prisons and jails across the United States. We had one man that was grading Bible studies for us that kept track of every state and city that the Bible studies were coming from. And we are now, I'm pretty sure we're up to 48 or 49 states. What happens in this building is just amazing. The mail comes, the volunteers all are willing to open it. They have to sit there sometimes for hours just slitting them open and taking them out. They put a paper clip on. Then they hand them to the people at the computers and those people will print out two labels for each Bible study. Once that's done, the labels have to be put on the envelopes, put back on the Bible studies, and stamped. Then they're brought into this room over here in the boxes and laid there, and then the next job is to separate. We take one envelope off. But the reason we do that is so that the prisoner can get the next four lessons. They've finished five, six, seven, eight. They get nine, 10, 11, 12 mailed to them immediately. That'll go out this week. Then the Bible studies with the envelope attached will go to different churches to be graded. The letters that come in, we have a whole group of people that will read the letters, and those are requests, but some of them are just so heartbreaking or touching. They're asked for prayer, almost all of them ask for prayer. I am really in need of a Bible and Bible studies, and I was told that you guys might be able to help me out. I would be very grateful and thankful for any help. I would also like to ask if you could pray for me and my family as we go through our hardships that I put us through. So that's a typical request. And we send them a Bible and the first four studies, along with an outline and a letter from the chaplain and some other instructions. The last part of the Brian prison ministry is the food warehouse that we have here in Peoria, Illinois. And we receive truckloads of food and it goes to churches as well as goes to uh, some of the jails that help them with their food supply, and it too is a thriving business. Uh, Luke 15 says that uh, uh, the prodigal son came back and all the angels of heaven uh, would start praising God if that young man uh, came back home to his father. And I think this is our, this is our calling as men and women who love God uh, to bring somebody to Jesus. Uh, the greatest thing that ever happened to me when I see somebody's eyes open and say, I, I need that Jesus that you have. I need that God that you keep talking about. I want him to do the same thing that he, that he did for you as he did for me. Since being out of jail, um, Ken from the Brian Ministries has helped me out uh, quite a bit. And um, he has brought me to 
Northwoods Church uh, a few times, so I, and everything's just beginning and new to me. But tonight, I'm all excited because I'm getting baptized. A little nervous, a bit excited. And I'm sitting in the first service, and I'm looking at the crowd of inmates, and I'm, the thought crosses my mind, I wonder who's committed the worst crime in here. Because when you're in jail, you can be there for parking violations, or you could be there for murder, being tried for that. It's, uh, we don't know why they're in there. And as clear as if it was a, an audible voice, which it wasn't, in my heart, God told me that the worst crime in this room is your pride, that you think that you're better than they are. And I choke up every time I think of it because I recognize that was truth. And then the next thought that came to my mind is if they had your dad and you had their dad, you would be the one in those jumpsuits. I'm the pastor of two small churches, but I have to tell you that every time I return from the prison, I return singing. And if there is one thing that brings me joy, it is the work that we are doing in the prison through Berean Prison Ministry. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some people are called to share the gospel in the prison. Some people are called to a lot of different places. But the amazing thing was, I never knew I was called until I got in there. And so there's some people that may think, that's not for me. I don't want to have anything to do with it. In fact, it might even seem a little bit embarrassing that I would have something to do with it. Don't try to figure out what God's will is until you go in and try it. And for me, that's when I found out what God's will was. Not because I wanted it, but because I got in there and he said, that's where you belong. <laughs> Esperanța mea ești tu, îl vezi de-a mea.